Um, and then suppose that the discussion after the class goes on and on. Tomorrow morning, I wake up with my head underneath the table. I'm looking up at the base of the table, uh, 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 the table from underneath. Um, then I'm in a different context with respect to the table, right? So I line up thinking, <laughs> where am I? You really practically anywhere, right? Um, I'm getting a different take on the table because my context with respect to it has shifted. Right? Whereas if I stand here, I'm in the same context with respect to the table class, then um, uh, my identity is going to be unconscious. So those are be different mode of because of the different context. Uh, I think that's what you're Okay, well, yeah. Um, yeah. Is it the sense just the characteristics that you're giving as kind of the markers that attach it to the internet? Uh, all I've said, is, what I've done so far is um, I said there's this distinction between informative and uninformative identity. Right? And I say we're going to use sense as the name for sense is just a word for whatever it is. When you've got the same sense, your identity is uninformative. When you have a different sense, it's informative. Right? That's all I've done so far, except I gave some kind of picture or impression as to that notion of tape or a way of being given. But I haven't said anything at all more detailed about what the sense is or how it works. So what I've said so far has been very abstract, plus a bit of metaphor. You think about the postcode class and so on. Yeah? Uh, and the next step is to get more detailed and say, what is it? How does it work? How does the sense we've got to assign? Yeah? Um, and that's really what we've we'll been doing in the first six weeks of the class, actually. We're trying to fill this out. But at the moment, we're trying to triangulate where the phenomenon of interest is. Uh, so you're saying uh, to every expression belonging to a complete totality of uh, science, there should be uh, there should certainly correspond a definite sense. But natural languages often do not satisfy this condition, and one must be content if the same word has the same sense in the same context. Yeah. So typically, you are saying to be like if you have a perfect language, that every word like you know, has a different sense, you would have separate words for each of the sense. But in our natural language, is not perfect. We have to settle for uh, if, if one word has the same sense in the same context. So I guess I'm, it seems like he's drawing a distinction between context and sense. So I'm just curious what it would look like when those two come apart. <laughs> Um, it, what we need to have something that is relatively superficial is that, um, I don't know, for example, I used to work at a university where there were three John Campbells. Yeah? I mean, very upsetting and distressing. Um, I, I once got an incredibly steamy love letter. Um, but, um, and I knew that I who the hell is this? <laughs> I don't know if you had to sell a table for the say, okay, that <laughs> mail it on to someone else. Um, uh, so there um, you have the same name being used with different senses, different references. Yeah? Uh, and what is distressing about that kind of case is um, uh, you have sentences, you, you have the same name being used in the same sense in the same context, namely in the context of the postal system. Sorry, same name, you use different senses in the context of the whole system. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So it's bad enough if there is someone on the other side of the planet with the same name as me. Yeah. But as long as we are not using the name in the same context, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But once you bring two names, being, once you bring the same name being used in two different senses into the same context, then the possibility of confusion is very great. And that's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 In these first few pages. That thing about informative and uninformative, that's a very kind of technical question. But that would not occur to you, I suggest, straight off, as really the base problem that you're interested in being interested in how language works. It's a very subtle kind of technical phenomenon that. But Frege's great move is um, we're trying to understand how it is that the words in a sentence can refer to the objects around us. This is the, the, the big problem, this is the fundamental problem. How is it that words can refer to things? And Frege's just been arguing that in order to explain how you got this distinction, there is really. Um, it might be a little bit technical, but it's definitely there. It's a real distinction between informative and uninformative identities. In order to explain that distinction, you need this notion of sense. You need that notion of your way of getting onto the object. Um, and the sense, he says, that's the mode of presentation of the object. Sense is what explains informativeness. That's how he came in. But then Prager's move is to say, sense is what fixes reference. The thing that explains informativeness is what hooks up the sign to the object. That's how the sign is tied up to the object, by being associated with a sense. So just to go back over that, when you take the morning star as the morning star, the same as a sense has to be making that identity uninformative, right? If you have the same sense here, it's got to be uninformative to be told that the morning star is the morning star. If you have the same text both times, um, it's uh, got to be, it's the same object. But then, same as a sense has got to guarantee, same as a reference. If you have the same sense, it must be, you have the same object there. So sense has got to be fixing reference. This is what's great about Frege, is that it all pieces here are individually very simple, but we really need to be getting onto how it is that the sign gives up to the thing the world. It's this notion of sense. We I mean, need that notion of sense. Sense is going to be what explains how the name is tied up to the thing. And that's how it works um, uh, when you have a sentence that you say, take the general term, is tall or shiny, or whatever it is. Then, if you have a sentence, the morning star is shining brightly, whether that's true is going to depend on whether that general term is shining brightly is true of that object. So we're going to get something here about what it takes for a sentence to be correct or incorrect, how there can be sentences that are going right or wrong. So long as you've got terms that, get, that are expressing senses, and thereby getting hooked up to objects, then we're going to have sentences that can be true or false. So the key thing is to figure out how sense operates. We already know something. The regular connection between the sign, the sense, and its reference is of such a kind that to the sign, that corresponds to the definite sense, and to that in turn, the definite reference, whilst when you're given object, it does not belong to the single sign. So the sign should be, in any one context anyway, the sign should be expressing a particular sense, just one sense, and in that sense, is hooking up the sign to the object. That's how it works. Okay.
Um, we will we'll block off into a few percent in the next time. But in the meantime, what is it to be denied? You know what I mean? Okay, and every time you do it, a bit more will come into your credit. Okay,